Hello, my name is Maxine Hankins Kane, and I'm a member of Lansing Regional Sister Cities. And this is the first of many uh, uh, videos that you will see uh, regarding our sister cities. We have our president, Barbara Roberts Mason, here. We have two other people here. And we're going to have a conversation uh, today about all of our wonderful, fantastic sister cities around the world. So welcome to our show, uh, Barbara Roberts Mason and Dr. Davis and Bill Brewer. Glad you're here, and thank you for joining us for this lively, lively conversation. And I want to start by asking you who you are, other than members of uh, the Regional Sister Cities, who are you personally? I want the audience to know exactly who you are beyond being a commissioner on our um, commission. Barbara, let's start with you. Who are you? Who am I? Yes. Well, uh, as I said, I'm Barbara Roberts Mason, and I've been in Lansing since uh, 1963 when I started teaching with the Lansing School District as a speech therapist. From there, I went to the Michigan Education Association and became the executive director for Lansing Schools Education Association, which was really an exciting opportunity. We did a lot of bargaining, and I learned how to do mediations and fact findings and arbitrations. and ultimately became the fact-finding arbitration specialist for MEA. Okay. But in the interim, I also became involved in politics and ran for the State Board of Education. And that was in 1975, and I served on that board, believe it or not, for all of uh, 24 years. Uh -huh. And that was a wonderful experience because I really became involved in making decisions and policies for all children in Michigan and became involved in learning about global aspects of education. Mm -hmm. So that probably led me to um, Dave Hollister's appointing me to the Sister Cities Commission, and that was over 20 years ago. I've been president now for, what, about 18, At least 20, or 19 yeah, 20 years, years, a long I think. time. <laughs> but I love the commission because one of the things that we always talk about is that we are really um, a window to the world as yes. our logo shows. Uh -huh. And we believe in making sure that the people in the Lansing area, and particularly our young people, recognize that we are far more than just Lansing. Absolutely. That we are a part of a big world. Mm -hmm. And if we mm -hmm. really look at what's happening in our world today, mm -hmm. our young people and our adults need to be able to relate to what's happening in Korea, what's happening uh, in North Korea, what's happening all around the world, mm -hmm. and figure out how does that how do those things impact upon me? Absolutely. That's a little bit of my background. I do have and there's much two more. children. Okay, you have two children. A daughter who's an attorney with the state bar, okay. a son who's a nuclear physicist, and two, three grandchildren um, who are growing up, <laughs> growing up. <laughs> okay. So that's a little bit about that's a, that's That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Dr. Davis, who are you beyond being a member of the Lance Regional Sister Cities? I'm, uh, I, I came here from uh, Grand Rapids in 76 to go to school to work on my uh, doctorate degree, uh, which was in international and comparative education. So I was already kind of wanted to be in an international um, arena. And what I basically has been, I had kind of two careers. I was a public health consultant, I retired from, and then I've also taught high school and, and uh, middle school, and I presently teach uh, as an adjunct professor uh, at LCC in um, Devonport. And I've just always had an uh, international uh, interest, and I've been with the Sister Cities almost as long, and uh, and I'm, I'm the, currently the treasurer, part of a blended uh, family. I've raised uh, uh, nine children, uh, two of my own, six uh, another, and then we have one together. So, uh, and I have also have a museum called All Around the African World Museum okay. that I just kind of feel, instead of putting pictures <clears throat> in albums, make a, put them on the wall. Absolutely. So that's kind of me, I just love to, the travel, I feel more comfortable in airports and and bus stations than I do anywhere because else. Because you're always traveling, oh, you're yeah, always going like, to yeah, Africa. Yeah. <laughs> you have a special yeah. attire, what is all that about? Well, your hat this, and your... 
Well, this this is what's called Kaunda suit, okay. which was uh, named after Kenneth Kaunda while the African nations were uh, um, uh, revolting against European dominance. And, um, and, and this is a shirt from Tanzania because we have a friendship city with Tanzania as well as the hat. So I thought I'd try to to match it, but I got to tuck in. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. that's but, fine. But that's 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 me. We that's about it for you. The tucking in part. <laughs> okay, we do. And I, I have this picture of this handsome young man right here. Okay. Who is this handsome young man who won some kind of award? <laughs> what kind of award was this? Who tell us about this first, and tell us who you are. Okay, okay. Again, my name is William Brewer, and I, I think I've been in the Lansing area now since um, 1990, and okay. so time has really flown by. And so I have a wife, Lisa, and have three uh, daughters, adult daughters now. Absolutely. And uh, I'm a business and human resources consultant. Mm -hmm. um, I've had my business now for over 20 years, Global Business Resource Group. That's great. And uh, just quite active in the Lance community. Uh, I'm on several boards, one of which I did recently receive an mm -hmm. award, which through the Michigan That's Credit nice. Union Foundation. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that was for uh, Volunteer of the Year. Uh, it's a statewide award that was given out annually for my service not only to uh, uh, Case Credit Union, at which I'm currently uh, chairperson of the board of directors, but for other boards that I sit on and all my other volunteer efforts that I have. Okay, congratulations. Of and look at me, I love Case yeah. Credit Union. Okay, great. I'm serious <laughs> about that. <laughs> now, Barbara. Yes. Well, well, let me see. And oh, I've, been, I've, and I've, been on, I've been on the Lansing Regional Sister Cities uh -huh. uh, Commission now for uh, probably since uh, 2001, 2002, that, that time frame. Okay. Uh, and that was following my, v my visit to Ghana and uh, was so enamored with the experience that I had to get involved. Yes. And, uh, and I, I like the concept of uh, citizen diplomacy uh -huh. and representing uh, Lansing uh, specifically and uh, the surrounding communities. Very good. Now we know more about you all. Barbara, you're the president and you've been president for the last, I think, 20, 20, 20 25 years. Why is that important? Why is it important to have a, a sister cities, or, or many sister cities? Why is it important? Well, I think it's important um, because it uh, makes people aware of the fact that the world is a big place and that we should all become as much involved in world affairs as we can. Mm -hmm. um, Bill gave a good example when he said he became involved with the commission mm -hmm. after going to Ghana mm -hmm. uh, because it awakened him to that African country. And, you know, I became aware of Sister Cities after going to Japan. Okay. Uh, we have a sister city in Japan, and I wasn't on the commission yet. I was on the State Board of Education, and we went to J Japan. And I said, oh my gosh, I never knew that these temples existed or that the culture is as it is and mm -hmm. that people uh, ate the kinds of foods even that they do. You go to the Chinese restaurants here, it's not like going to a dinner table mm -hmm. at a home stay um, in China. Mm -hmm. But Bill also sent his daughter to our sister city in mm -hmm. Korea. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that that awakened her to um, an environment other than uh, just that which is in Lansing. Mm -hmm. And that's so important because we do have exchanges with um, Japan, mm -hmm. with um, Ghana, uh -huh. with uh, Korea, and with China. Uh -huh. I have Tanzania. pictures that I will share with you okay. of our exchange program with San Ming China, mm -hmm. with students who were here. And it's just, just a marvelous. And my granddaughter is going to go to Japan this year Okay. My nephew went to Korea when Bill's uh, daughter went, and we just want everybody to know that yeah. you don't have to be on the commission to be interested in a sister city mm -hmm. or any city. It doesn't yeah. have to be one of our sister cities right. because we're the window to the world mm -hmm. for all of Lansing and for whoever visits us, whether it's the Croatian choir that we celebrated at mm -hmm. the Capitol one year, or it doesn't matter. Okay. Just we want you to know that, you know, open your eyes, understand okay. what Kim Jong Un is doing. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Understand it all. Absolutely. Of um, the history. Where, where did this begin? I think that Mayor Hollister or someone uh, mm -hmm. helped uh, us with this project. What happened there? Well, Mayor How Hollister founded the Sister Cities okay. um, over 25 years ago, 
and that was his belief that uh, we should be a regional sister city, that all of our surrounding areas should be a part of what we do, that if we're going to improve economic development in the city, if we're going to look at education and culture, that we have to have a, a means by which to do it. And the best means is really by organizing a commission of people like Bill and, mm -hmm. and, and Willie and mm -hmm. you and the other members of our commission to speak out okay. about the world and about the, the things that are important. Absolutely. Now, uh, Ghana is a huge place. And we zeroed in on Occupy South. And I understand that you helped do that. You helped us zero in on our first sister cities or locate that. Tell yeah, us about yeah, that. It was really interesting. Uh, we had a, a group of people from Grand Rapids sister uh, city, which is the God District in uh, Ghana. And so uh, we were asking for a, a sister city to that or in Ghana that might be interested. And so they told us that the, they had an adjacent sister city, Aquafilm South District. So, you know, we talked and everything. And so I went, Barbara sent me, you know, she, 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 she delegated. Tell, <laughs> takes us everywhere to go. Don't talk about to, me to, now. To, to, uh, <laughs> But that's great. You see where we are now. Yeah. And so um, I went and we talked and they decided to come and partner with us. And so we've been there now 20, 21 years now okay. uh, since we started Sister City. And we still kind of maintain a relationship with Grand Rapids and the Ga Sister City, you know. Okay. So, so it was a wonderful relationship and a number of people uh, uh, from here uh, were part of that initial group to meet with the uh, God District in Grand Rapids. Okay. So it turned out really well. I recall that meeting at the mm -hmm. Kellogg Center. It was in that yeah, little room yeah, when they yeah, came. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, we also write grants to do our work. I know, Bill, you have been a project manager mm -hmm. of a project there in um, Ghana. Well, Tell us about you know, that. Um, in, uh, I believe it was 2012, mm -hmm. uh, we had the opportunity through uh, 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 Sister Cities International to write a Bill and Melinda Gates grant. And so through that process, we were awarded uh, funds to provide some type of um, uh, initiative uh, in our sister city in Ghana. And it was Africa specific. And so after multiple conversations back with our, our principal contacts uh, in the Abri, uh, uh, Occupant South uh, area, uh, we came to uh, to uh, uh, a meeting of the minds and and, and, and what projects uh, would 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 provide the best impact uh, for the region, and through that uh, we were able to um, uh, the the grant identified specific villages uh, in that uh, region that could use a public toilet accommodations, and um, and so uh, through this project, uh, I believe it was maybe. Uh, three or four three, different mm -hmm. villages that uh, we built very substantial and sound, soundly built uh, um, uh, uh, public uh, facilities, um, bathroom facilities for these villages. One that could be serviced by uh, the community, kept clean, and, and then be accessible to everyone in the community. And it was, it was greatly needed because mm -hmm. primarily um, uh, what we observed was that the facilities that they had, they were kind of one-off, one, -off, one uh, you know, uh, type of outhouse situation, yeah. and it was dilapidated. And so uh, the facility that we built was was very sound mm -hmm. and, and sturdy and could last uh, decades. Yes. And mm -hmm. so we also, through that that grant, were, were able to uh, renovate. Um, uh, I think two clinics mm -hmm. uh, uh, that they uh, currently had and just needed a, a refresher uh, to, uh, uh, and, and to spruce up. So not mm -hmm. only did we provide painting, uh, we uh, repaired doors and windows and floors and things like this provided uh, through the assistance of many partners here in Lansing, provided equipment um, mm -hmm. and provisions uh, to uh, e equip the, the clinic there and so that was outstanding and then okay. to top it all off uh, we were able after all of that uh, we had additional funds but well, we had funds that were left over and we were able to purchase a ambulance um, 
uh, for the region. And this was our second ambulance that we right. provided to that community. And right. so That's it was a very successful project. It lasted for about three years mm -hmm. and uh, fully, really comprehensive uh, in, 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 in the, uh, the approach that we took to, to facilitate this whole project from beginning uh, middle to end, okay. and then at the conclusion, our sister city was awarded uh, 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 recognition for the service, the work that we did, okay. and then Barbara specifically mm -hmm. was honored for her leadership uh, uh -huh. in uh, uh, that she provided to all of us to get the project done. Okay, good. So, is uh, the the maintenance fees, mm -hmm. the upkeep, was that a part of the grant, or do the people of the village have to do that part? Well, well, what was uh, agreed upon mm -hmm. that uh, everyone in those particular uh, villages would contribute, you know, cents on the dollar. You know, uh, it, uh, uh, some communities said, well, we, we would charge people maybe 10 cents or something like that to access uh, the, the, the train so that we can hire a specific person uh, to keep the facility clean mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, once um, we're, we're very well known in Ghana, the whole country, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, and more specifically, the Occupant South District, and so uh, we've had outstanding partnerships with the uh, the leadership uh, there, and uh, they have attributed funds uh, to As our well. projects to, to make sure that uh, uh, that uh, everything that we've done uh, we have done for them that is uh, maintained. Okay, uh, thank over the you. Years. Thank you. you Barbara, know, this, this, this program is so important mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. one of the things that we've looked at over all the years that we've been going to Ghana is the whole area of health mm -hmm. and the whole areas of water, sanitation, and hygiene. And one of the reasons we focused on this is because we would look out and people didn't have clean water to drink. Uh -huh. uh, they didn't have facilities that they could even go to in many of those instances and didn't have clean water. So we uh, made sure that we had, we put in wells in different parts mm -hmm. of Kana, mm -hmm. particularly in Nsachi, for example, which is a traditional village of our sister city. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to make sure that people understand or understood um, the importance of sanitation. If you don't have access to it, you really don't understand how important it is to your health. And so we had lessons and training on the importance of clean water, mm -hmm. uh, sanitation. We had um, uh, looked at no def or defecation free zones because if you don't have the facilities you don't have anything to use so mm -hmm. that was important and the importance of washing your hands mm -hmm. um, but our health programs have gone back for many many years and sure. Dr. Davis can tell you about some of the things that we did years ago even Dr. Dean Cinco who was mm. now yes. at Michigan State University was yes. involved in our very first health study mm -hmm. uh, in Ghana, where we went into every area of Occupy South District mm -hmm. and interviewed uh, individuals. And as I said, Willie can tell you more about that. Please because share. Because of him, we did, or mm -hmm. he did, I, mm -hmm. I should say, a 10-year health study okay. in Ghana, okay. which really showed the improvement the that's so. taken place uh -huh. because oh, yeah. of us. And the importance of our commission. Okay, Dr. sanitation and, and education. Uh, uh, just showed uh, knowledge, especially in terms of some of the issues dealing with some of the diseases uh, that had it and, and some of the work that the ambulance had done. It actually showed since our entry into their system that it actually, sh there was a lot of progress done. And we did the survey over three surveys over a 10 year period. You know, beginning uh -huh. the first, then five years, and then after 10 years, see that there was a steady uh, a growth pattern. And so a lot of the work, we even had uh, uh, many people from our uh, Lansing uh, Sanitation Department that actually went there right. to help out as well too. Okay. So, and then we also had students that came from there to be trained in sanitation that would also go back. So we had a very, very comprehensive project and all this was indicated, you know, through the survey activity that we had done. So it was very uh, successful, our, our, our interventions um, in, in the Aquabim South okay. District, as well as, as, as surrounding areas also, I believe, took off from what we were uh, also doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, Maxine, you remember, mm -hmm. um, our first entree into the health aspect. I was going to ask you to share that story. Oh, Go ahead. because we were we went to Ghana together. I think it was the first time mm -hmm. or second time, 
and we went to visit the hospital in Ensawam. Ensawam Adrujiri is our second sister city because the breed mm -hmm. uh, algorithm grew so large that they divided it mm -hmm. into two districts, one mm -hmm. municipality and one district. Right. But we were at the hospital and there was a big mm -hmm. explosion, uh, a truck accident. Mm -hmm. And my goodness, we w went to the hospital and found out about the accident and we saw these two men laying on, a c on the floor mm -hmm. and just almost a bare floor. They had some something under them that they were laying on and their arms were in the air and their legs were in the air because they were burned so much mm -hmm. that they just couldn't touch anything. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to know, well, why can't you get them to a larger hospital? We know there's a big hospital in Accra. Mm -hmm. Why can't you get them there? Mm -hmm. And they couldn't get them there because they didn't have an ambulance oh, right. to right. take them there. Mm -hmm. They had a truck but they were burned so bad they, mm -hmm. they couldn't be put in a truck. Mm -hmm. And we became so upset just looking at them and mm -hmm. it was just so heart-wrenching. Mm -hmm. We said, we're gonna go home mm -hmm. and we're gonna raise money in Lansing mm -hmm. to get an ambulance to Ghana. And we did, mm -hmm. we had no idea how we were going to do it, mm -hmm. but we came and we probably begged people like Bill who wasn't <laughs> involved yet and mm -hmm. Willie and the city and Sparrow Hospital. And mm -hmm. we ended up buying an uh, ambulance from a rural area of Michigan, mm -hmm. and we took it to Hill High School, and yeah. they can they did all the repairs in their auto shop. Yes, put Lansing Regional Sister Cities and Aquapim South on it, and we drove it to where did we drive? Your, it to Baltimore. Yeah, your your nephew or your cousin, right, was the driver. Drove it, <laughs> and right, and we sat in the back. On the, yeah, and yeah. took it to Baltimore, put it on the ship and ship that ambulance to, oh. to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And then when we got there, we had a health group there, uh, Ron Nichols, who performed surgery, yes. uh, yeah. Saray Eden, who yes. uh, did a lot of internal medicine, mm -hmm. and we were all there when the ambulance got there, and it went up and down the streets with the siren oh, going, and, and everybody was <laughs> so it was excited. excited. Yeah, um, good work. What am I fun? The Go ahead. I, I had the, uh, Lions Club uh, do an eye clink where we gave everybody glasses. Yeah, right. I was admitting that. That yeah. was my fondest memory yeah. oh, in Ghana. Yes, indeed. Because people came from miles oh, early mm -hmm. in the morning. Right. Old people, mm -hmm. young people, mothers mm -hmm. and fathers walked mm -hmm. from miles and miles to come to our, uh, this little setting where we had people who um, mm -hmm. were there to examine their eyes yeah, and exactly. then give them you know, eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. I recall one older man, probably in his 90s, who hadn't seen in a, in a number of years, who was jumping up and down right. like a child because he was seeing mm -hmm. for the first time in many years. Mm -hmm. But then as the sun went down, they had to all leave because there were no lights, lights. Right. in the hospital mm -hmm. and they all went home. But that was, I think, a powerful, oh, powerful yes, yes. Our Sister Cities um, yes. endeavor there. Well, the other mm -hmm. one that we did mm -hmm. with a Gates grant earlier mm -hmm. um, was on HIV AIDS. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, when we adopted mm -hmm. some orphanages and helped. Yeah. But we, the most important part of that was training seamstresses, mm -hmm. um, market women, mm -hmm. to understand HIV AIDS and to understand um, self-awareness mm -hmm. and self-empowerment mm -hmm. to help them to avoid being contracted with AIDS, mm -hmm. but um, that was a wonderful experience, it just was. working with the women mm -hmm. uh, to help them to understand how to become empowered themselves right. and how to avoid that kind of contact right. and to stand up for, for Absolutely. themselves. That was a wonderful grant that uh, we had yeah. as well. What about planting pineapple and mm -hmm. building the bricks, <laughs> the individual bricks, you know, for the mm -hmm. hospital out of out of our mud and some substances. Mm -hmm. What about paying for the women who, who are, um, are new mothers right. to go home because they didn't have money to pay the hospital to go home? Right. So and we, one of our things we used to do is to go there and find out how many mothers are still here with new babies mm -hmm. and would any up and pay but a hundred dollars a piece yeah, for their very fees. To go. But that's all changed now, I understand. Yeah, that has they changed. don't have any mothers and babies captive in the hospitals now. And also, too, we got uh, um, a, a lot from the uh, Ghanaian uh, uh, people. When I look at, at uh, Lansing, I'm sure at least 100 people from Lansing, you know, through especially Barbara's effort, mm -hmm. have gone to Ghana and interact with Ghana. So the relationships that we have dealt 
have, have, have developed with them mm -hmm. is, I mean, is magnificent mm -hmm. that are still existing. Absolutely. And we still have people there coming here and we going there and interacting uh, with them on various projects as mm -hmm. well as, as maintaining personal uh, relationships as well. So it's yeah. been a, a, a tremendously uh, marvelous experience and there's been a double, a two-way, you know, kind of exchange of of ideas and feelings, mm -hmm. and 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 come here and and help us out doing a lot of things as well. I know <laughs> you're excited. In the fact, uh, I know. Yes, I took uh, mm -hmm. four children to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think maybe in 2006, mm -hmm. and it changed their lives. And mm -hmm. here they are in the slave dungeons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Four of them watching this young man. You probably remember his face. Yes. Mm -hmm sharing the, the, the tragedies that happened in this location. Mm -hmm. And here they are um, outside, and that's the Atlantic Ocean and the mm -hmm. actual cannons mm -hmm. that still remain there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they say that the experience changed their lives. I want to show you Slave River. We, we always go to Slave River. Well, one uh, of the things, as, mm -hmm. you, as you look for the picture yes. of Slave River, one of the things that those young people have often talked about uh -huh. is looking at that river and saying, my gosh, the ships left this dungeon on this, well, not the river, on the ocean. Mm -hmm. And that's where my ancestors absolutely, came from. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and it changed that really was a life-changing mm -hmm. experience. It changed your life. In yeah. fact, uh, we're gonna be going to Ghana in October, Bill, and visiting that same site. So do you call your experience at, uh, at, at the um, slave, the, uh, the slave well, dungeons? Well, it's located in, ca uh, in Cape Coast, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it's right there uh, on the, the shores of the Atlantic. Um, and so, and uh, that picture that you were, were showing, it just illustrates um, uh, because uh, Ghana was colonized, and so, mm -hmm. and and, uh, mm -hmm. and that particular fort was 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 taken over by multiple uh, the, the British, the Portuguese, the Dutch, mm -hmm. the Dutch <laughs> and all of these things. But it was a fort, military yes. fort, absolutely. And uh, and then when the slave trade uh, uh, was initiated, mm -hmm. uh, it was converted into uh, uh, dungeons to house uh, slaves mm -hmm. that were accumulated on the whole western part of Africa. Yeah. Is that correct, Ms. Uh, Dr. Davis? Yeah. And so, yeah, and then, but nobody talks about the, pil it's a pilgrimage, uh, and, and, and that's a nice word to, to, to use to describe uh, the, the conveyance or transporting slaves that, that were captured all through the, the western part of Africa down to that particular point where they lost millions of slaves mm -hmm. in, in that, um, mm -hmm. that pilgrimage down to the, down to the the the, the, the slave the dungeons, the dungeons. and so uh -huh. so you think about it, uh -huh. um, most slaves were, were were acquired through through conquest uh, or some type of tribal war, mm -hmm. so then they survived that. Then they had to then they were uh, um, uh, uh, put in chains, put in chains, march. and mm -hmm. marched uh, mm -hmm. uh, many many uh, hundreds of miles mm -hmm. down to the coast. Mm -hmm. And so they survived that, mm -hmm. and then they had, and they were stored in those dungeons for weeks or months mm -hmm. uh, until Absolutely. a ship came, and, and they survived that. Yeah. Then they survived the middle passage, taking them and dropped them off at different uh, the places. The diaspora. Yeah, yeah. The, the diaspora. Yeah. And so that, so that whole experience is just that the people who actually made it to uh, to. Uh, the, the, the new world or whatever, yes, yes. you know, these were strong people to, to endure all those. Mm -hmm. And so until you actually see it for yourself, mm -hmm. hear the stories, and then conceptualize all the things that our, our ancestors went through, um, uh, it, 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 it's, you just, it's very hard because you just can't realize all the, the pain and suffering that yeah. the people went through. And then yeah. for, uh, for once you reach here, it's a, a, a lifetime of struggle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once you're there. And so that's, yeah. that's one of the best parts about my experience in mm -hmm. experiencing uh, Africa and Ghana specifically uh, for myself as opposed to being told uh, uh, about uh, it or uh, reading uh, about or it. Or reading about it. Mm -hmm. You actually so experienced it. Yeah. Actually experience mm -hmm. it. In fact, some people, for example, I have one friend who could not go in the dungeons. Right. She stayed on the bus. Mm -hmm. 
my husband, Eugene Kane, did not go in the first time. Mm -hmm. He went the second time and he was in tears. But yeah. these are the four students uh, that went with us. Uh, this is a picture of, of slave, of uh, slave river. Right. Where they right. took the, the, the captives well, see, and yeah. watched and wa bathed them in this before yeah. going to the dungeons. Right, yeah. They uh -huh. were bathed in, in the river. Yes. And then they were sold. Yes. And then they were taken to taken the dungeons. Taken to mm -hmm. the dungeons. I see we have uh, Reverend Salisbury, one of our nonnas who's, mm -hmm. who's um, deceased now. Well, but you know what, Maxie, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, one of the, the um, I, I enlightening things that I've experienced, because I think now I've, I've been to Ghana maybe a, about, 17 times or mm -hmm. whatever over the years mm -hmm. since 2001 mm -hmm. is the evolution and evolving of, of that we've this, seen through the of, years uh, through the years mm -hmm. uh, of this particular country mm -hmm. in yeah. Africa mm -hmm. you know when I first went you know uh, communication uh, was sparse where we had to to use a phone booth and it was only maybe two phones and you had to call the international uh, at a operator certain, at a certain and, time and, during a certain the night. Time yeah. and then and then leave a message and mail connect the call and then they had to call you to come back to get the <laughs> phone and then now to see how uh, it's, 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 it's very, changed. It's changed so much, mm -hmm. you know. And everybody and, and, has a cell phone. And it's changing. And, and, and you know what, and the thing about it is, and it seems as though it has grown exponentially uh, um, over the last 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it looks like, a, yeah, um, you know, in certain part, uh, the capital of Accra is, is so modern now with hotels and, mm -hmm. and a thriving, uh, it's, a, it's a thriving uh, uh -huh. metropolis mm -hmm. and stuff. And, Absolutely. And just to think, uh, Dr. Davis, uh, that the country, will, um, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it uh, was, uh, I think, democracy O only occurred maybe in, in like 1980 or 79 well, or something through a coup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah after a coup, yeah. it started off as, 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 as one with the first president, yeah. with Nkrumah. Right. But then it, there was a coup yeah. and uh, it was taken over and then it came back to uh, a, a democracy and then that didn't work. So there was another coup <laughs> and then the, uh, President Rawlings gave it back as a civilian government again. Mm -hmm. So they've had a history of that. It was also the first country to become independent in right. Africa, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, too, from col colonialism, mm -hmm. too. <clears throat> but but yet yeah, started off and then they went to a coup and then it then So they've had two coups and this is the third, you might say, democratic administration. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what's so interesting to, to, to all of us, one of our dearest friends in Ghana is Nana Ochiri Bekwe, uh -huh. who is a queen mother. Uh -huh. And a lot of people know that there was a coup, etc. Mm -hmm. But when you listen to her, she talks about being involved her in the husband. coup. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how she was a very dear friend of Rawlings mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. but also that her husband was involved in the coup and he disappeared. It's, to this day, Never she doesn't know whatever happened They met at her home often. And she is considered a real warrior, mm -hmm. a queen mother warrior. Mm -hmm. But to know somebody like that, to be mm -hmm. able to sit down and talk to somebody like that, who can really give you a firsthand experience from her soul or heart or uh -huh. mind, uh -huh. it's just exciting. And that's the kind of relationships that we've really developed mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it's not like going on a tour when we mm -hmm. go. Yes. It's going and, and knowing the people and getting to meet the people and experiencing mm -hmm. what life really is Absolutely. about. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that we are able to uh, visit the villagers and see your traditional chiefs and, mm -hmm. and queen mothers mm -hmm. and their lifestyle. And at the same time, we've gone to visit the president. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's comforting. And but it's let's important talk to note that there's an agreement between mm -hmm. the state of Michigan mm -hmm. and the nation of Ghana mm -hmm. yes. uh, in terms of economic development, cultural exchanges, um, education, et cetera. Okay. And I think that's important because we have that greater connection between our state. It was signed first by uh, Governor Engler. Okay. And then subsequently, Governor mm -hmm. Snyder signed the agreement um, and we took the agreement to President Mahama in Ghana where it was signed on both sides. Uh -huh. So that's, that's another connection that's that I think is important uh -huh. for people in Michigan and Lansing yeah. to know about. I mean, what's happening uh, October 31st? What's happening October 31st, Barbara? Well, we're going to have a Ghana delegation, a delegation of Lansing area people go to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And during that visit, we will be visiting the embassy 
um, because we, we did know everybody, but people change as administrations change. Mm -hmm. The last time we were there, we even had a concert by Alvin Waddles at the ambassador's home. U.S. ambassador. Uh, mm -hmm. The um, U.S. ambassador's home mm -hmm. in Ghana. So we are hoping to uh, meet with the ambassador and the uh, chief of missions again and uh, have our delegation learn more about how the operation, how the embassy operates. Um, it's my understanding that we're also going to be able to have a meeting with the new president of Ghana, mm -hmm. that he knows that we're coming, he's been informed that we're coming, mm -hmm. and if he's in the country, um, it's going to be arranged that we will meet with him. We will have 20, 22 people mm -hmm. from um, the area who will be going, mm -hmm. and we will have, we will be looking at our projects, uh -huh. the ones that Bill talked about. Uh -huh. uh, we have somebody who is monitoring them all the time for us, which mm -hmm. is uh, one way that they stay in tip-top shape. Like the festival. Yes. Oh, yeah, the that's, anniversary. that's right. Um, uh, we busy. were there for the 10th anniversary of um, the Paramount Chief. Maxine and I were there. Mm -hmm. I don't remember whether we had a big delegation at that time or not. Mm -hmm. um, but now we will be going and we will all be celebrating the 30th anniversary. And when I say okay, anniversary, it's the anniversary on the stool from the date that he became chief, paramount okay. chief. Mm -hmm. uh, so we will be there for a big Durbar, a big it's celebration. It's going to be exciting. Lots of, yeah. of Durbar is a festival. Yeah. It's Lots of noise. And one of the things that I enjoy about uh -huh. our relationship with Ghana, because we're talking specifically about Ghana, and, and is that the relationship that we have with both uh, 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 forms of leadership there. Uh, yes. we, we have the traditional. It's strong on both sides. Well, well, yeah, right. So we have the traditional leadership, which is comprised of the chiefs and queen mothers, mm -hmm. and uh, the sub chiefs and, and the sub chiefs uh -huh. uh, of different villages, and you, you primarily find that in the rural areas. And then we have a relationship with the uh, the the democratic. Uh, 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 leadership, which is comprised of the president, the members of parliament, mm -hmm. the, uh, mayors, the the mayors and governors, yeah. and all that, and yeah. so, and so we we enjoy that relationship. So we're able to 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 stem the, the tides and, and, and get the full spectrum. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So when we travel there, um, uh, uh, and what what I like about it is it's the full emergence uh, of the experience, and so it, we're not just stri strictly tourists there. We get a chance to give, give uh, our, ourselves and the people who go with us, you know, uh, exposure to, to the urban settings, to the, the more, uh, to, to the rural areas, to the uh, coastal areas uh -huh. and that, but then also meet and be received by uh, academics, uh -huh. uh, um, uh, 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 what is it, uh, uh, well, business, business people, people yeah. business uh, the people, churches, and the religious, uh, yeah, our, our our community. Re re yeah, religious leaders, right. as well as the politicians right. there. Right. Now, Dr. Davis, mm -hmm. Tanzania, we're almost finished. Tanzania, mm -hmm. what's up with Tanzania? Well, we have a friendship city with Tanzania, which is not as, as formal as a uh, sister city, because the sister cities, the mayors have to meet and exchange. Uh, we we kind of link with the mayor there. Um, but our mayor hasn't um, been the other part of that linkage. So generally our mayor goes there and their mayor comes here, and that hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. But it's still a relationship that kind of follows the Sister City mode of looking at culture, health, education, and business uh, too, but a lot less a uh, formal piece. So we've maintained that since I think about 2000. And and seven, mm -hmm. um, and so um, and, and so we link with our uh, when we have our extravagances here. We always have a Tanzania table as well oh, yes. too, and yeah, we interact with some of the people through Michigan State. Michigan State has a number of projects uh, in Tanzania as well as in Ghana, as well as in Africa. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, this They're is out. the decade of the of, of Africa and the diaspora through the the UN, and they're actually doing a South African thing. Uh, in September because Michigan State was the first country to divest, first university to divest in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And many of us had had some uh, in, in, in dealing uh, with that. So we kind of maintain it. And it's always been an interest of mine because both Ghana and Tanzania were the kind of, you might say, the head of the Pan-African effort. 
uh, and initially kind of started off as, as socialist uh, countries, but they have always spearheaded the independence of Africa. Okay. So, so mm -hmm. I've always and I and I and I learned some Swahili too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay. So that and kind what of is your name? Oh, what Baba, is your name? Baba Kubwa, uh, which means Baba means father, Kubwa means big. So like Big Daddy. Okay. But I named myself that. But well, I was actually named Kweku in 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 uh, from Ghana too. Yeah. But that back in '97 through another group that I was with. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of that, we have all been in school, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted uh, Bill to share uh, your experience with being in school uh, well, as a well, warrior, that, 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 and your, give us your name as well. Okay. Well, th that happened on my very first trip, uh -huh. uh, and uh, it was just what a surprise! Uh, uh, well, it was a surprise <laughs> in 2001, and, and basically, what 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 has happened is is because of all the efforts uh, that Lansing Regional Sister Cities has done for them, uh, this was their way of honoring uh, the organization and and its members with uh, um, uh, an honor, and, and really trying to empower you to keep coming back and to be of service to them. And so we were all given names uh, really just associated with, with what they saw from us in our spirit, I guess, uh -huh. and, and that uh, they felt that um, uh, um, this would be your charge in, in going back home, making people aware of what uh, Ghana has to offer and to continue to build that bridge between Lansing and, and, and Ghana. Okay. And so that my experience was is that it was very, it was a festive uh, um, uh, experience where it was just a, a, a number of people who came from multiple villages and, and they had uh, uh, six of us uh, sequestered. And so we really didn't know what to expect. And so, uh, and so but then they dressed us in traditional uh, African garb uh -huh. and and then they they put us put all you of, on. all put on their you shoulders. Put Big Bill and That's Reverend right. Murphy That's and right. Reverend Salas were on those shoulders. On their shoulders and carried us through the village on their shoulders. Yes. And throwing talcum powder on us, whatever. And I and I guess that symbolizes is just cleaning purity. the spirit, pure purity, purity, and uh -huh. all that. Uh -huh. And then uh, then they went through the this whole ceremony, and they even had the sacrifice of. Uh, of a uh, uh, sheep, sheep. Uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. and they uh, poured libations, they poured libations, and, and so washed our feet with the blood of and, the lamb, and, and so all that yeah. was, and then it was a big celebration after that, Absolutely. and uh, and so and so we 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 have take all have taken our yeah. our charge over the years very seriously. seriously. And yeah. what's your name? What is your name? My name, uh, Asafarheni uh, Archery Kweku, and so uh, Asafarheni means uh, warrior chief. Okay. And so, okay. and so we want to we want to tackle uh -huh. some uh, uh, poverty and, and sanitation and yeah. health issues. So you're and, doing it. Yeah, yeah you're and, doing and, it. Yeah, and you're doing it. You're and actualizing so, it. Absolutely. Okay, so. Barbara, what is your name? Nana Yachanwa. Okay, what does that mean? And uh, it means the development queen. Uh, it means that you know I have to help to make sure that all of us make sure that the um, country continues to be developed, the area continues to be developed, mm -hmm. and that we take a leadership role in um, developing projects and programs that are consistent with the needs of the area. Okay. So it doesn't mean just doing anything, but mm -hmm. consistent with the needs. So I am a Nkoso Hini. Okay. Hima. Mm -hmm. Sorry, and Reverend Murphy yes. Nana mm -hmm. uh was in Kosa Hina, mm -hmm. Hima, he, one Hini. or the other, Hini. Hini. Right. Hini. Yeah, he's Hini. We'll get it straight. Mm -hmm. uh, who was the development chief? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. my name is Nana Queer Embisa Akobia Hima, mm -hmm. which means I'm a counselor to you. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm supposed to um, um, work with you on different projects and support you, and when there is a war going on. Mm. Bill goes out as a warrior to fight, mm -hmm. and I stay there uh, in the village to sort of make things to sort of happen mm -hmm. as well. But I want to show you a few, a few things. I'm going to stop the show. But here, this is this is powerful because this is what the mm -hmm. um, the chiefs wear mm -hmm. when they uh, are in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And Barbara, what are these? Those are um, nana beads. More these or are less. these uh -huh. are nana beads. Mm -hmm. And here's a picture of me and Bill's in the background 
of the day that we did get in school in 2000 and mm -hmm. 2001. A funny story, then we're gonna, we're gonna close it down. Well, before it's funny, these are pictures of, uh, of uh, some teachers in our school called in Chinny and Chinny. This is a typical classroom in mm Chinny -hmm. and Chinny. The students um, who attend, they are, they are lovely, they are smart, they are kind, and they take education seriously. They want to learn. Um, mm -hmm. Discipline is not much of a problem over in Africa, right. because they still do some things that we don't do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we have the people in Lansing area and Detroit yes. uh, to thank for the kind of work we've been able to do with the schools. Yes. Because we've built libraries over yes. there, yeah. and we provided textbooks, and thanks to Lansing Community College, um, Dr. Knight has made sure that we've had laptop computers or use laptop right. computers right. to be able to take over. So we started technology labs over there. Yes. And I, we have to, a shout out to Sparrow Hospital and McLaren, but we have received so much hospital equipment. Mm -hmm. We have sent over at least two cargo containers mm -hmm. of hospital equipment mm -hmm. and computers yeah. and bicycles. Yeah. And they appreciate it. They and they do appreciate it. it. Yeah. So Lansing has been so supportive. and. You know, I would just say so keep a thank on you on behalf keep of on all supporting of us. us. We need you. And 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 in, in Tanzania too. We we work with a school two CME too mm -hmm. uh, in Tanzania, and we've taken them some computers too. Uh -huh. uh, the the more the the ones that uh, I can't remember they Facebook type. I can't remember what they were called, but okay. something a uh, group of them. But the, our caveat is the junior NBA is a international uh, NBA where they have them in about. 20 countries and uh, about a couple million kids are involved. Our school, 2CME, played for the National Junior oh, Championship right. in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. They lost. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but they, they played. They played. But, but they, they played. In the first year of it, they, they played. played. They, uh -huh. right. they, they played yes. for it. And Just one other area to emphasize, uh, because, and, and I'll ask Bill to do this. Okay. Because for Lansing, no matter what our sister city is, whether it's in Italy or San, Korea mm -hmm. or Otsu, Economic development is very, very important. Right, right. And Bill has taken an economic development mm -hmm. delegation to uh, Ghana. Right. So I'd like to talk a little bit about Go that. Go ahead, Bill. Uh -huh. Well, you know what? Uh, I, I think that the relationship was uh, was built primarily with, uh, with philanthropic uh, mm -hmm. uh, support, mm -hmm. and then after that, uh, uh, and the relationships have been built, and the, the the bridge has been built, and so after that, we we looked at how can we um, uh, uh, pursue and exploit business opportunities there. And so there are int interested uh, business people from the Lansing area have accompanied me uh, to look at opportunities in Ghana mm -hmm. and, in, and as well as delegations from Ghana has, has come over to Lansing mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. explore that as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And so through that, different business ventures have been uh, uh, born and, uh, and have thrived over the years from from uh, automobile parts and automobiles uh, to to textiles and clothing to um, air conditioners, air conditioners mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. artifacts, mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, artwork and all that, right. all the like. And so, mm -hmm. and so, and so, it's just kind of a direct pipeline between uh, uh, Lansing City and uh, and the region and uh, the, uh, the, the country, uh, that was the country. And what's yeah. interesting, the population of Occupy South District was almost the same population as Lansing. Oh, mm -hmm. wow, that's, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, A funny yeah, story, the wow. world is really, really small, right? I was attending my um, granddaughter's graduation. She finished eighth grade. Uh, uh -huh. And they had over 400 uh, students graduating on this day. Mm -hmm. It was May 25th. I sat beside an older lady who said that she had a daughter and a son-in-law who traveled the world. Mm -hmm. As it turns out, the father in, at the graduation was the son of one of the queen mothers in a brewery garden. Mm -hmm. mm. Nana Achewa. Nana Achewa. Oh, Do you know her okay. son? No, because I, I, don't, I met I don't, him. I, I met him I in Atlanta. I, I, I don't. I, I haven't met him. 
and he no, recorded a little know. message for I'll show it to you after the, okay, after the show. Okay. But it's a small, small, small world. It is. It's time for us to say goodbye right now. All right. But um, I hope that the audience um, enjoyed the conversation and learned a lot about mm -hmm. uh, sister cities and uh, Ghana and Tanzania. And I want to end, uh, not like I began. I began by saying, who are you? Mm -hmm. I want you to share with me who you think Lansing Regional or what you think Lansing Regional Sister Cities is. What are we all about? What is our goal? What is our purpose? And then we're going to call it a day. We're going to call it a wrap. And we'll start with you. First, I think it's the best sister city relationship, especially with Ghana in all of, of, of sister cities. And our goal is to spread the news in terms of those four areas and in education, uh, health, uh, business, and cultural mm -hmm. relationships, and to keep doing that. And okay. to maintain what we've started. Okay, Bill? Well, as uh, through Sister Cities, we uh, are considered uh, citizen uh, diplomats. And uh, we are all adults, and we chose Lansing as our home. And I think that we all love the Lansing community. And so when we go out and represent Lansing to the world, uh, we, t we, we take it seriously. And then we just want to exp ex expose the world to Lansing. And so mm -hmm. I think that our job is to keep building that bridge, no matter what sister city we have, is to, to expose them to Lansing and then ex expose Lansing Knights to, to whatever country that we're working with. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Our president, well, and I, thank you I, for your leadership. You're well, awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I agree with what they both said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would just go a little bit further and say that I really believe in our youth. And I really believe that our youth can be ambassadors for Lansing Sister Cities. Mm -hmm. um, as we had our youth summit this year, and you're going to be going to the conference in um, Colorado, the mm -hmm. Sister Cities Conference, and bring back more information about youth summits, we want to continue to do that. And at our last meeting, we started a youth auxiliary to our Sister Cities Commission. Mm -hmm. And we want to grow that auxiliary. We want to have as many youth from all of the middle schools and high schools to become a part of what we do because each one of them, uh, each one of our young people can be and should be a citizen diplomat and ambassador for Lansing mm -hmm. and should be opening their eyes mm -hmm. uh, through the windows mm -hmm. to the world that Sister Cities is all about. So just, just spread the word thank and you. just be a part. <laughs> mm. And to our audience, thank you for joining us today. My name is Maxine Hankins Kane. Uh, next time you'll hear from our friends from uh, who traveled to and from Italy, and then Mexico, and then uh, Japan, and then China, and Korea. So look, and Korea. So mm -hmm. looking forward to spreading the word about Lansing Regional Sister Cities. Thank you for joining us today.